All right. We are live and I am super excited. We're going to go ahead and get started because we are in for an incredible evening. I have some amazing friends with me today. Hey, you're tuning in. You are tuning in to Child Heart. And we do these webinars every third Tuesday of the month to equip, to uplift, and to inspire you and to help you to move your children's ministry forward. So thank you for joining us tonight. We are talking about children's ministry online versus in person. So I'm so excited to get into this topic, you guys. So like I said, we do this every third Tuesday of the month, but next month, we are not going to be here because we are doing something super awesome. We are doing the Children's Ministry Moving Forward Virtual Conference. So we are going to replace the webinar with this. We'll make sure that you register for this event. But we are going to dig right into this because I have some amazing friends with me today when I was thinking, okay, we're talking about online, we're talking about versus in person and everything that goes with that. Who can I get? And I found the greatest group of friends to talk to you today. So if you are tuning in and you have a question or something is on your heart, whatever it is, go ahead and post it. This is for you. Oh my goodness, Josh. Noelle, Ty, I'm so excited that you guys are here hanging out with us this evening. As we get started, Ty, you go ahead and start first, Josh, and then Noelle. Tell us, for people who are tuning in and who are listening and spending their time with us this evening, tell us a little bit about your children's ministry journey and what's going on with you for those who may not know you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us on this evening. We're so excited to partner with you to just talk about ministry, children's ministry as a whole. I'm Ty Moody. I, cur I currently reside in Birmingham, Alabama. We um, started the ministry, the Worship Center Christian Church, actually 15 years ago. We just celebrated our 15th anniversary. And my responsibility at the Worship Center is all things next generation. And mm. so I oversee everything with children's ministry, youth, um, our school, everything children's ministry. So I'm just glad to be here with you and stay connected and um, just talk about how we can serve the next generation. Yay, super excited, Josh. Tell us who you are, it, it, besides amazing. Tell us who <laughs> you are. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, hey, I'm Josh Zello. Um, I'm in Bernie, which is about uh, 45 minutes outside of San Antonio, Texas. Uh -huh. uh, I'm at a church called 1910 Church, and uh, I have a really specific and unique job. I'm the preschool pastor. So birth all the way to age five, that's me. Once they hit five, kick them out. But um, <laughs> so I have been here just over two years. In fact, I hit one year and then COVID hit. I'll tell you. you oh, more my goodness. <laughs> And I am married to my best friend, Hannah, and we have a four-month-old baby girl, Avery, with her four-month checkup this week. So. That, that is exactly what I was going to say. You have a new job now, because now you're a papa. I sure do, yes. <laughs> How's it going? Yes. I'm loving it. Um, it's funny, so she's been here four months, and I cannot imagine life without her. I love it. Oh, my goodness. No. I love it. I love it. I love it. And All right, so kids ministry and dadhood now. Um, I'm doing social media for all things kids matter too. So love and getting to help them out too. So now you are going to be a super pro because now you have a test case in your house <laughs> when it comes right. to reaching <laughs> right. children. And now we have Noel. He is with us, Pastor Noel. Absolutely amazing. Pastor Noel, tell us a little bit about you and your journey in children's ministry as we get started. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Well, we are here right now. We have a, a presence uh, services with the kids. Uh, right now, until, well, the last year we started in July 11. So it's a little bit hard, but we're trying to learn every day. Every day, every day we're trying to do something new. Uh, I have uh, my mask, my my 
<laughs> I say it. <laughs> everybody, everything, everything for, for the new alcohol, for the new, everything. Yes, uh, different, different kind of mask. So oh, we try to be ready for this. I know, I know, I know. This, uh, I love this. <laughs> I actually saw that. And this so, is so I saw Noel, he had that. And I kept seeing him online ministering to kids with this mask on. And I had to get it. So I actually got me one too. I think I look like Darth Vader in it, but it is still really cool. <laughs> well, you guys, we're going to get started because you, I know we are you. excited. We have people. We're tuning in from all over the place who who are, are some are online, some are in person, some are trying to navigate through the challenges of this pandemic. So I want to ask you guys a few questions. And as we have questions going in the chat box, please feel free to, to go ahead and uh, comment and add your questions in because we want to make sure that we help as many people as possible this evening. This is why we are here. So Hey, Josh, I'm going to go ahead and start with yeah. you, okay? So given Great. this pandemic, everything that's been going on, okay, let us know, Josh, we Inquiring Minds want to know, what is your church doing in this pandemic? Are you online? Are you in person? And how's that going? Uh, yes and yes, we are both. So um, in fact, in Texas, our mask mandate and occupancy rules, all of that was lifted just last week. So we're now once again meeting. We've got all of our chairs back in our praise center. So um, the church is not even close to being full now. I think we're at about 45% where we were. Yeah. So, um, still trying to think through too. Okay. On top of Sunday morning and Tuesday nights, which is when we have our kids ministry on site. Um, on top of that, how can we serve and love these families who aren't ready to come back yet? Yeah, yeah. So, and right now, that's mainly through every single Thursday. Um, we send out an email called the resource. Um, mm. And that has strategy tools that parents all the way from birth to high school can use. It looks really, really nice. It's really pretty. It's based all around what we're going to learn this upcoming Sunday. Um, and that goes out every single thir Thursday at 7. And then two quarterly, we have family nights as we're trying to really pivot to our main job, not just being serving kids, yeah. but being parents, because they're who's called to be on the front lines of yeah. serving these kids and spiritually guiding them, not me, but moms and dads. Joshua, that was so hard for Guy and I. You know, when everything shut down, you yep. know, we're like, oh, no, what about children's ministry? Right. <laughs> Who's going to teach these kids? Yes. Oh, that's right. That's our job. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, I mean, we went on this entire journey. I love how you talked about resources, how you, you reserve Thursday. You guys are sending yep. out resources. Tell us how exactly are you getting those resources out to parents and families? Yeah. So um, some of that comes from Orange. Mm -hmm. So um, we use orange for birth all the way to fifth grade. Mm. And then our middle school and high school, they actually write their own curriculum. So those guys are um, part of why we picked Thursday is because they, they can they can say, hey, here's what happened yesterday, last Wednesday night. And then here's what's go going on next week. So I'll send out praise songs or Here's a game or here's some ways that you can talk through this upcoming story. Or middle school and high school, they may talk through too. Hey, here's some challenges that you're a seventh grader. Yeah. Might do. And here's how you as a mom or dad can um, can serve them there. And even this past week, we put a link to a um, blog about how moms and dads can active listen. Yeah. Um, which is a really big deal. So, just so you're doing so you're doing the blogging. You yep. were you were doing social media. You were yep. sending out emails, just hitting Bit. all of those different platforms. Yes, yes, yes. We are trying to just catch them anywhere that we can. Awesome! I love it. I love it. Ty, tell us what you're doing. How's it going? It's going well. <laughs> we are solely online, though. Um, we are have all virtual on for our families and our children. Yeah. We are. Um, something separate for our children and our youth. Our children are what we call it TWC kids. 
they are, um, you know, preschool to fifth grade, and then our middle and high schoolers are our youth. And so we have a youth pastor that will actually videotape his messages for them. And then for kids, we use Orange as well. Um, we also provide online activities for all of our, our babies and um, worship music, but we actually house it on our website. Um, so, I, But Josh, I love the idea about sending that weekly email to try to keep it before them, um, our families and parents, because they're they're overwhelmed. Um, so we also do, um, for our youth, we do weekly Zoom calls to kind of actually connect with them. They And we have Swerve Ambassadors as our youth leaders, and they kind of help lead those calls. Um, and then we actually start putting our kids in front of the camera. Um, so for, even though we use oh, I love it. we use the kids to do the intros and outros. I love that. And so they're used, now they're seeing some of the kids that they used to see in church, mm. and they're used kids that you know we can kind of or some of our um dream teamers kids that we'll kind of pull them and put them in front of the camera and we'll give them a script and they're reading it off the you know the screen um and then our for our youth we would try to give them conversation starters leading up to the zoom call every week so they'll come in and record we'll record once a month for all of the youth kids stuff all the kids stuff and that kind of gets them involved because our kids kept saying listen I know y'all think y'all cool, but we don't want to see y'all on the screen. You know, they want to see themselves. And so we listened. And so that was one of the things that we had done to try to stay connected. But right now we are solely online. So those are some of the things that we're doing currently. Oh, I love it. I love how you're using the kids for the intro and outros. Our kids so look up to the older kids. It is so amazing. If there's anybody that I know who is so good when it comes to using junior leaders, it is Pastor Noel. He, I mean, just blew my mind when we got to take a visit and those junior leaders, oh my goodness. I'm like, can, can y'all pray over me? Because this is how amazing that these kids were. So Pastor Noel, tell us what you are doing. How's it going? Are you online? Are you in person? What's going on? Well, yeah, well, I don't know. You're here good because I have a problem with the right now with my connection with, with, with the Wi Fi, but I'm trying to do the best. Yeah. Right now, we stopped doing in the social uh, videos and everything. Yeah, yes, we do in person with the kids. We have two services sat uh, Saturdays and Tuesdays. So, Saturdays is more. Um, general for the kids something fun something um well i do magic tricks so i i normally i do something with my puppet and magic tricks uh, for the for kids in the lesson but the tuesday is more la like like lesson like play school so right now we try to do it in, uh, in that way um we have a, a i don't know in in your case with the american kids, but the hispanic kids uh, well, the parents, I think, uh, it's a little problem with the um, make a connection in YouTube. So, right, okay, you hear me? Everybody's gone. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, you're going in and out. So, go ahead and knock out and come back in. And oh. I will let you in and we'll restore that connection, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna let him we're gonna let him move out. It's so funny because Pastor Noel is actually in a service right now. <laughs> he's in a service and he is so amazing. He's like, hey, he has such an amazing team. He's like, Oh, they can handle the service. I will come on and then when we're done, you know, I'll go back into the service. But he is absolutely amazing you know, with junior leaders and getting them involved. I was so excited because I actually got to go and see Pastor Noel in action. And that's how I got to see. I was so inspired how he didn't just get leaders, but he had kids and how he empowered them to be leaders. So super excited. We're going to try it one more time because <laughs> he is back. We we love you, Pastor Noel. We are, we are going to we're gonna get this shit moving. But you know, as he's coming on, as as we're getting this together, Noel, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can, can you hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Hey. 
So we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. So, Josh, tell me. Yes. What, yeah. yeah. Are you so, back? You're sorry. back. You can hear sorry me. <laughs> you are, you are, you are absolutely fine. Yeah. We are gonna we are going to keep this train moving. Hey Josh, tell me mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges in this season for you with everything you know that's happening. We are living through a very real pandemic, right? That right. is, I, I know we want to say, oh, it's gone, no, everything's okay. We're still very much in the midst right. of it. Tell me what has been one of the biggest challenges for you in this season. So I'm with you. I felt lost being a kids minister without kids. And um, mm -hmm. so March 2020 came and my kid wasn't born yet. In fact, we found out that she was coming the week quarantine started. So my wow. joke was, well, see, um, I just miss my, my kids so much. We've got to <laughs> have one. <laughs> um, and that's I, the reason, right? That right, you had right, a kid, of course. Right. <laughs> I really, really miss those kids. Mm. And uh, as kids ministers, we're shepherds. And uh, I missed my sheep. I really, really did. So, and then that led me to a greater challenge, which was for years and years, I've been saying my number one job is to equip parents. Mm -hmm. But when I look at my own Google ca calendar and my own kids ministry budget, yeah, do I really believe that? Mm. Is if you look at how I've spent time and how I've spent money, I spent time and money on Sunday mornings. Yeah. So once Sunday mornings was gone, I'm like, okay, wait, what do we, what do we spend time on, and what do we spend money on? Yeah. Uh, COVID really forced me to make that flip of okay, now I'm going to put my time and money into what I'm saying really matters, which is equipping parents. Yeah. who for months and months were the only ones who could see their own kids, not me, but them. Yeah, yeah. I love it, Josh. I, I mean, for me, that was something I think a lot of us, you know, kind of woke up on. You know, mm -hmm. I think as children ministry leaders, we kind of assume the role and the responsibility. Right. We are the spiritual guides. We kind of forget about the parents sometimes. We are yeah. the spiritual guides. What can we do to minister effectively, you know, to these kids and then our babies were gone we couldn't yes. see them and yes. it was such a wake-up call like you know oh my goodness you know how how have we been equipping the parents of it if anything in the season that's definitely something that i took away man partnering with parents is so important so i love that ty tell me what has been one of your biggest challenges in the season uh, I would say trying to creatively stay connected and consistent, um, consistently connected with our children and family, because like Josh just stated, our that the, the easiest way was on Sunday mornings or events or programming and different things of that nature. Well, now that that's not an option, how do we make sure we properly resource the, our families and our yeah. babies? Mm -hmm. I say families, because we can't resource them without the parents, like even yeah. as a mom. Currently, you know, I'm like, I have to do what? I have to take you what? You know, it's all <laughs> you have to convince the parents before you can get mm -hmm. the kid. You know, yeah. Especially even them getting on a Zoom call, you have to, you know, so we had to um, be more intentional of try to figure out ways and creative ways um, to really connect with them uh, more creatively because our yeah. tradition of how we serve them has shifted completely. Yeah. And so we did um, rethink our strategies, right? because we couldn't do it in our traditional way. Yeah, Ty, so what are some things that, that you had to do? I know there are so many ministries where they're like, oh my goodness, how are we going to connect with these parents? How are we gonna catch these parents? You know, um, tell us, what are some uh, creative things that you guys did? To connect with them? Well, one of the things that we do for children, we call it TWC Kids Connect. So we will do mm. monthly connect events online, like we did Christmas, for an example, we did Christmas cookies, a Christmas story, and we did um, arts and crafts. So we did this whole huge thing online and we made them wear pajamas. We made it like this. I love it. And so we tried to, and then we know our audiences, while we are trying to appeal to our babies, we know that we are really trying to appeal to the families to get connected, right? So mm -hmm. we send things to parents, we send things church wide and not just our our children's ministry kind of um, roster. We are like, no, we need 
all families. And then when we found, um, especially because we're all virtual, we found that we're serving more people that aren't local than that are. And so everything that we do now is um, virtual. And then we provide it, we ship everything out to our families. We make sure all of our families have these resources consistently. And so that's an example, just, you know, we do events online um, consistently with our babies. Um, we do small groups, of course, online. Um, everybody's, you know, we're getting tired of zooming it, but <laughs> today, you know, we want to be healthy. We want to be safe. And so that's one of the things that we continuously talk to our family. So, so you, so you're getting zoomed out, but I have to tell you, I love the Christmas idea. I think one of the hardest things for me, we have a Christmas musical at our church and I, I love helping out with the Christmas musical. I love this the entire season. I mean, we all act like it's horrible, but we, we secretly right. love it. <laughs> like get the kids ready for this musical. And that was something I'm like, oh no, it's gone. What am I gonna do with my life during the Christmas season? So I love how you guys found a creative way to still get the kids, hey, come online. You know, let's maximize this opportunity. Come in your pajamas, okay? We're gonna do Christmas cookies and all those fun things. That sounds like a blast. Pastor Novo, tell us what was the most challenging thing for you in this season? We're going to see if we can get Pastor Noel well, back. Try to be. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You hear me? Yeah. The big challenge, I think, is for the be careful with the kids. Try to be safe. Um, and that, that I think that's in the, the big, ma, for me, the big point mm -hmm. for that. Try to, you know, we we right now we don't have uh, games. We try to put the distance and uh, try to do another another things, another activities. Uh, they can touch it or something for the, mm -hmm. this moment. I think maybe in two, three months more or my, uh, a couple months more we have a uh, more games or something like that. But right now it's about the health and the be careful with the kids. Yeah, I think yeah. me, the, big, the other big challenge is about they learn about these these little things uh, a little more uh, <laughs> about the streaming, about the videos. Uh, you know, the the try to do the best because right now I think for me I don't know you, how you think about this, but I think the big challenge right now it's we we have a I don't know it's competition about the, with the Disney Channel now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Games. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, because the, yeah. the kids they love the video games, but uh, I think if you do some that uh, you do something good, but yeah, I think that is the best engage for that. Like, I think yeah. it, it, that, that that is my point for do the some something like uh, magic tricks in the in the show and the services or puppet something like that. But I don't know. I, I love that, Pastor Noel. Well. Right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think that that was definitely one of the biggest challenges, right? Out of nowhere, we were all forced to cross over how we did children's ministry to this digital platform. And for some of us, you know, who were super techie, you know, oh my goodness, that's amazing. But for most of us <laughs> who were not super techie, Josh, you look super techie. I'm going to go ahead and make that judgment call on you because you look techie. like, yeah, you look like you kind of have it all together. <laughs> but for the rest of us, we're like, oh my goodness, how can we continue to learn these devices and learn mm -hmm. how to stream, how to reach them and with a spirit of excellence because these are digital natives, right? They got Disney, they got Nickelodeon. How can we create something that's, that's, that's excellent, you know, that's really gonna reach them, that's really going to up the engagement factor with them and i know that was one of the biggest challenges if that was a challenge with you let us know what was the biggest challenge if you were listening to us today what was the biggest challenge for you in this entire season because i know it was absolutely crazy but there were some good things mm -hmm. you know i i think there are a lot of lessons that we learned you know i learned to actually sit on the porch outside you know at first it was decoration but you know, the pandemic actually forced us to spend time together. 
as a family, Ty seems like she has the, the all American amazing family. So we, we try to look like her in the pictures as a family. I should have taken pictures, but <laughs> tell I mean I mean, tell us. So what are some things that you that you gain with with uh what you've done, you know, in this pandemic? So if this pandemic is is lifted. All right. And not if, but when, all right, because it's going to happen. But when it's lifted, you know, what are some things that you've learned in this season that you may keep that you you're not necessarily going to rush in and get rid of it? Ty, let us know. What are some things? All things have to be digital because everybody's not Mm going to feel comfortable in coming back. So Mm -hmm. everything we have already made plans and created systems in place to make sure that everything that we're doing, no matter what it is, that we are going to always have to be able to serve a virtual audience. And so one of that's one of the things that we've had to learn and create a system for because we didn't, we're like, oh, okay. You know, so we had to kind yeah. of move fast. But one of the things that we have we are going to do no matter what is have all things virtual, even once we're in person. Yeah. Um, some people, honestly, it's just the the pace of some people's lives is simpler to, you know, wake up and go to church, you know, and some people, you know, they're, it'll take them more time. And some people, it's just their level of comfort just due to health and safety. They may be more prone because they're high risk. And so one of the things that we know just in our community that we're going to have to always provide um, a virtual option for our constituents. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. So we have people in the chat box. They're talking about you know, some of the challenges that they face, um, Aaron, you know, starting right, you know, as the pandemic hit, trying to gain momentum in general, along with gaining momentum in programming and connecting with families. I mean, how many of us have gone through that? Angela, reaching out to the kids during the lockdown was a challenge. Alan, Angela, we hear you this mm-hmm. Evening. I love it, Ty. I love it. I think it's so important that we continue to keep the digital. That is one of my greatest fears. I'm like, no. I mean, I, I'm like, God, you know, I, I I know I don't want to play the pandemic down. You know, I, I have people, I was up this morning praying for people who are in the hospital because of this pandemic. So I know that this thing, you know, is, is very much real. But if there was a benefit, it, it moved us over to where they were, right? <laughs> they were already over there. We just weren't there. We were we were stuck in our traditional way of doing everything. So I was super excited because it forced us to kind of up ourselves on the next level to go there. And I completely agree with you. We need to stay digital. Some people aren't ready. And even when they are ready, let's stay digital because our mission is so much greater and they are out there. Josh, tell let, let us know. Give us some feedback. I mean, what will you keep? That you what what are some some new things that you've done that you will keep? Is First it the one. six feet? Is it right. is it keeping kids six feet away? <laughs> <laughs> that has not worked. <laughs> First off, Ty, I love that point that um we're in we're in the um stage right now that as things here open back up, I'm trying not for us to go back to January 2020 mm-hmm. because there were so many who back then we missed and didn't know it. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to take tools that we've learned this past year and yeah. use them, like light that thing that we we'll, that we'll send send out every single thir- Thursday or um, yeah. or yeah. social media and videos and emails. Um, but I'll say for us, it's that it's tools. I want yeah. us to keep putting tools in the hands of parents. Yeah, and I think up until COVID. We talked a lot about that, but mm-hmm. I don't know if we did a great job putting tools in the hands of parents to engage with their own kids. And uh, moving forward, I want us to keep that up. I mean, yeah. I brought up our quarterly family nights. One of our goals there is um, we want them to leave with things in their hands, mm-hmm. like things that yeah. that day they can take and and use that, right? If that be prayers or games, yeah. Or games yeah. and stuff that y'all can can work through next week. Um, I want to put tools in the hands of parents yeah. to see where their kids. Can I speak? Uh, to- yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, one of the things that I realize, and it just may be the community in which we serve, um, tools are great, but I've learned that a lot of paper, um, they're not going to read it. So right. 
some of the tools that we have to be more intentional about on the digital side needs to just be how to videos, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, this is, here's a prayer. Mm -hmm. um, it's a video versus writing because we, um, this was pre COVID and we learned this pre COVID personally, we would do the, the weekly emails in the families and then they're like, we don't know what's going We had it. Oh, it was in that email. Did you get that? email? <laughs> <laughs> and so we found that nobody's reading cause we were yeah. overloading our yeah. family resources. And so at least for one of the things we learned, we're like, okay, well maybe we need to still give them the resources and tools like, yeah. oh, gosh, but how we do it may be a little bit different or need. Yeah. I love that. I love so, that. Um, just doing videos of, you know, discussions or, you know, um, of different things. So those are a few things that we've been talking about with our social media team. Yeah. More videos of how to's. And let's That's get great. into that, you guys, because we have, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the feedback, you know, a lot of comments that are being made is, you know, what about parents? You know, Amber says one of the big issues is parents not engaging, you know, or, or, or leading kids at all. You know, that was a challenge, you know, for her. Um, Cherie, what suggestions do you have for parents that have checked out and, oh, this is a good one, and are not keeping their, their children slash teens engaged? You know, uh, she's trying to empower them. What What advice can we give to her this evening on how to get on how to keep them engaged. What do you think? What do you think, Ty? Well, for our children, for our children, for us are different than teens, right? Yeah. Our mm -hmm. teens have learned, and we are learning. This is all we know. are learning. <laughs> um, one of the things, like I said earlier, they wanted to see themselves first of all, because, like I said, mm -hmm. I think I'm really cool, but my 13 and 12 year old is like, no. Um, so. <laughs> But they really don't think so. So just little things like making sure they see people in their minds that are kind of that they want to hear from. And then um, we use the social media. Uh, we're trying to do a better job. So I'm not saying we're masters at this, but what we're working towards is using social media to kind of snag our teens because we know that audience, our, our fusion youth social media, our youth will be on that. Whereas our TWC kids social media, parents will be on that. So our mm -hmm. audience different for both of those platforms right and so we kind of reach our youth mm -hmm. a little differently in social media and little commercials and try to quit because their videos too is like you just a shot in the arm to try to just tag them and kind of get their interests um but for our little people um that is a challenge like yeah it's real talk because if you don't get the families or if mom is at home with you all day doing schoolwork um mama needs prayer you know, and so yes, what, I do. Yeah, <laughs> as a ministry, as a whole big C church, yeah, talking ways of how we as a big C church address the parents' concerns mm -hmm. so they can stay connected. So, yep. you know, how do we have more parenting small groups to address? I'm I'm worn out and I just mm. want to get right now and I want to put my kids up for adoption and sell house. <laughs> like some days are like that way for some moms. Yeah. Ads. And so just being honest and having real conversation and allowing platforms for that. And yeah. then you can all that other good stuff that we're trying to get for our babies on at, at that during that time. So, yeah. So we, so we actually have to connect with the parents and be personal and know where they are. You know, we, we I mean, because we have different churches, you know, our cultures may be different. We have a lot of younger parents. They may be on Instagram. If we have older parents, they're on Facebook. I'm on Facebook a lot. I'm struggling, uh, telling myself that I'm older now. <laughs> but I love Facebook, you know. <laughs> but that, Josh, what do you think? How can we get those parents engaged? So for us, we've just started trying to use social media more on purpose. As mm -hmm. So we made a, a social media plan that, okay, Mondays we'll post this. Mm, that's good. Tuesdays we'll, we'll post this. So uh, that has helped, and I've seen even in, in this past week, I, I started that about 10, 10 days back, honestly. Um, awesome. And it has been great. So, and it's starting small, but it's starting. Yeah, Start. but it's starting. So, and for <laughs> us, we're a young church. So for most of our moms and dads who are millennials, they're on Instagram. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I've been putting posts on both um, both Facebook and and Instagram, but really Instagram's getting likes and comments and engagement. Uh, Facebook's just getting me 
me uh, me me pressing share on my own post. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot. I've, I've seen a lot of memes about that. Yeah. But I mean, it's really yep. you joke. It's like a test case. I love Ty. I love how you said we are still learning. Like we are are not self proclaimed experts. We are all growing. This this these webinars we do are all about us growing together. We are all children's ministry leaders who are still learning and we are coming together trying to get better together. So I love that. I love the, the Josh, the social media plan. Has your church gotten together? Have, have, have you gotten your children's ministry team together to talk about your social media plan to go where they are? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love Angela Nixon. She says, allow platforms for parents' concerns. I love Ooh. it, Angela. Okay. Have you know, allow them to share their concerns on platforms. But like Josh is saying, know where they're at. His parents yep. are on Instagram. Where are your parents? I love it. We're gonna keep this train moving. So Ty, this is well, no, actually, Josh, this is really, you know, for you. You guys are kind of yeah. like, you know, in person, out of person, in person, ties out of person. <laughs> He's like online, out of person. That's a new word created by Child's Heart, by the way. Don't steal it. I'm going to make sure that I register that. But for churches who have returned mm -hmm. to in-person children's ministry, how have you managed, Josh, balancing, like creating, a, you know, a safe space? Because you said it. You, you said that it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I've yep. been guilty as well, but I have not had the social distancing police catch me giving my kids a hug. But how do you do that while still trying to make them excited and engaged in children's ministry? And that's huge because number one is safety. If these kids aren't safe, then we can't show them Christ. Mm. And, and it would break my heart if a mom comes to drop off her child and sees my team and sees my hallway and sees my classrooms. He goes, ah, yeah, no, this isn't safe, and leaves. So yeah. really, right, yeah. right now, our preschool hallway has the strictest COVID things in place of the, of the whole church, where yeah. our church has started to move out as well. The mask, you can wear, but you don't need to. I have my yeah. team still in masks. Yeah. So, because I want moms and dads to feel like we're trying to take every step that we can to keep their, yeah. their safe. So there's still there's still mask wearing. There's still lots of cleaning in between service times. Yeah. And there is limited toys. Mm -hmm. So now we have less toys because every single toy is getting wiped down. Yeah, which is and, fun. Yes, <laughs> and that might be a thing that we keep too because really I think we had too many toys. And now yeah. that we have less toys, the kids are playing with each other and not just with toys because we don't have a block for every single child. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's been good. And um, we're not serving snack right now. Mm -hmm. I think we might keep that too, because we found now that snack's gone. Really, we're spending our our time more focused on children's ministry. Wow! And our service time is an hour ten minutes. Those kids yeah. will be okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And I've had a, I've had a, one child this whole past year ask for it. Wow! Most of them don't even miss it. So wow. I, I think we'll keep that, but um, really we're trying to think through, okay, what are ways mm. that we can send these kids home with memories? The phrase I'm always going back to is, I want these kids to form in this hallway Christ-centered childhood memories. Yeah. I have a I friend who, who always says for his own kids ministry, uh, when these kids look back, I want them to have like warm fuzzies. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. Here too. So um, I'm always trying to think through what is the one thing this week that I can do to send them home with a brand new memory. So in this past week, um, Orange, it was, it was Jesus, Jesus washing feet. Mm. Uh, 2021 does not seem to be the right year to have a big bucket of foot water and wash yeah. every foot one by one. So we wash feet with gloves and wet wipes. And yeah, Christ wow. used wet wipes, but <laughs> and we found a safe way to wash kids' feet and still ensure to moms and dads we're doing everything yeah. we can to keep their kids safe. Yeah, I love it. I I love the term warm fuzzies. Right. I'm getting, I got warm fuzzies when you said warm fuzzies. I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, I love it. I love, Josh, how you're talking about we have to consider, 
you know, even regardless of our comfort level, you mm -hmm. know, we have to consider what parents are saying, you know, when they come in, that we have to care about the parents who are going to be like, wait a second, this is, this looks unsafe. You know, we're not doing anything, you know, to protect these kids and, and, and those things that can cause them to walk out the door and walk away. And because of the message we carry is so much bigger than the four walls, you know, of our church is so important that we're considering, you know, all of those facets. I love it. Hey, if you are watching, you know, let us know what you are doing, you know, to try to stay safe while keeping up that engagement level, you know, and that level of fun in children's ministry go ahead and let us know what are you doing if you're cheating like i did don't feel bad i've given tons of hugs <laughs> side hugs right they're called side hugs but when they tackle you i mean it's too late so it's just i mean it's a wrap you know that's something that i've been but listen ty tell us you know josh is kind of you know he's fluctuating online in person okay exclusively online right yes Okay, yes. so so tell us for those who are who are watching, who are exclusively online, what advice, Ty, do you have for those who are trying to retain engagement in this difficult season when everybody's checking out? You know, volunteers may feel left outside of the line. So many things, you know, uh, uh, and you said it yourself. You know, while we were on here, you talked about being zoomed out. They're experiencing virtual fatigue. Really, in essence, that's really what it is. You know, do you have any recommendations to just to overcome this and still maintain that yeah. that personal touch in children's ministry? Well, um, honestly, we Zoom. Them. <laughs> we Zoom. Them. So we actually Zoom every month with our um, dream teamers. Every like every first um, we do Mondays. So every first Monday might be our kids ministry. Every second Monday is our swerve leaders. Every third Monday is our our youth leaders, and we just kind of, and we don't have much of an agenda. We're saying, hey, this is coming up next. Like for Easter, our youth, they're doing a citywide scavenger hunt and they get to take pictures and social media it and post it. You know, we need your help at this. So we're trying to bring them up to speed um, with different things. And then we just, how are you doing? Like, yeah. you know, you're driving back and forth. Are you working? Are you working from home? And we just do heart to heart talks. It's nothing deep, nothing. We're just doing check ins. And so yeah. that's what to maintain um now do we have our entire roster on those zoom calls no we don't mm, however yeah. we do maintain those meetings to let them know that we're there for them like so yeah you know you show up we're here if you don't show up we're here like I, we more than anything the message we want to send to them is that we're here for them yeah. Um, and so, and then we do make personal calls right we make sure that hey you know i i saw you know because we are of the age of Facebook and not necessarily Instagram as much. Um, I may say, hey, I saw your, you know, your son graduating or, you know, you were in a car accident. Like, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's how some yeah. information is shared. Mm -hmm. Or we have um, our ministry. We do um, prayer calls every morning. I heard on the on the prayer call that, you know, you asked for prayer for this. I, I didn't know about that. Let us know. You know, we try to stay connected with them that way. Yeah. So, I love it. So you've been so you've been zooming. So hey, if you've been zooming, Catherine says Zoom is our safe place. <laughs> so if you've been zooming, you know, let us know. You know, one of the things I have to say, I it forced us to discover, you know, how to make Zoom, you know, right. kind of come alive, right? Because I mean, a lot of us was, I mean, we were completely zoomed out. I'm gonna tell you right now, um, you know, I had to discover kids matter. Does, I mean, they do, Josh, you know, this, they do a lot of games, you mm -hmm. know, to try to make it fun and, and entertaining. Crowdcontrolgames.com was another one that I just discovered that was so, I mean, so many games on there that just really made it fun. So if you are Zooming and you are online, do not sleep on these amazing things. And even, you know, uh, a streaming and going live, I'm going to tell one of the secrets that I learned. <laughs> Ecamm Live. You know, what, one of the struggles I had was, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, even streaming, you know, sometimes it just looked kind of boring. You know, people, we were getting kind of bored with just how it looked, you know, with Zooming. But Ecamm Live actually connects with Zoom and you can create all types of overlays and uh, just a lot of fun stuff uh, to do to just, um, I mean, to kind of capture the imagination of kids. So that is a secret I got from Joshua Denhart. I have to say that before he texts me right after this. <laughs> Don't give away my secrets. <laughs> but we are here to equip 
Josh, do you, Josh, let us know. No. I know you know about Zoom. Let, yeah. let us know. What are some things that you've been doing with Zoom? <laughs> so funny enough, um, now that we're back, um, we're still finding use in Zoom. So, um, and that's one of those things that we've learned this past year that we'll still hold on, hold on, mm -hmm. on to. Um, I'm doing a a book study. We're going through "Show Them Jesus" by Jack Klumpenhauer. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome book. Okay. Um, and uh, found that okay. Let's Monday nights meet on Zoom for 20 minutes, and uh, mm. have folks come that might not come if it was an in person. Yeah. One mm -hmm. more thing that they've got to come up to nine and ten church for. Mm -hmm. It is click this link and stay twenty minutes. It's short. Twenty sleep. twenty minutes. This twenty. Yes. Josh, I love that. You know, yes. twenty. We we don't need to be keeping these right. people longer. <laughs> no, no, no. Because the wealth there is in that book. This is just okay. Let's touch base and let's talk through how this book can apply here. Um, a second thing that I found two weeks ago. We have these huge, really weird winter storms here. Yep. We do it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody kind of kind of freaked out. But what I found was when church shut down Sunday, I had a parent meeting Sunday, Sunday, Sunday after church. Um, and years passed, I would have said, well, if we're not going to meet, I guess we're not having that meeting. Right. Now, okay. Okay, easy, Zoom link. Right. Yeah. It didn't stress me out once. That's awesome. Um, but then during the um, lockdown too, I did every Friday morning story times with my yep. uh, with my preschool kids. Aww. And it was great. It warmed my heart seeing all those little tiny faces all throughout that screen, still in their still in their jammies, eating 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 Pop Tarts. So I love it. I love it. Okay, so Josh, let me ask you another question. Ty, chime in on this one. Yeah. Um, um, Pastor Noel, we know you're here in spirit. <laughs> hey, sometimes you know, we know internet's not yeah. perfect. Is that not something that we also learn in this season during this yeah. entire pandemic? But I love this. So uh, Angela made a good statement. You know, I mean, they're looking for ways to reach kids who are unable to come on Zoom. I mean, what what can we do to really try to reach those kids? I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> During it. lockdown, we did this thing called pop-up praise. Mm. So we took a big speaker that was on wheels. We took a big megaphone and we went to kids' homes and stood in their front lawn and said their, their, their name. It was Plan With Mom. And we're like, hey, Carter, come on out. He doesn't even know that we're there. He oh. runs out at this front porch, and we lead a whole kid church service for that one child from their front yard. That how is. Many, I have a question about that one. Please. <laughs> okay. So, how were you able, like, how many would you do in one, like, day? We did about three or four. Okay. Um, one day every week. So, it was. Okay like every Friday. And uh, we had our team film that too, and then we would make that into a video to send out too. Oh, nice. I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, hey, listen, April says, uh, Chicago, we have weekly Wednesday Bible jams. Ooh. Slash virtual activity this Sunday virtual morning. Man, uh, I love it. April, we that's what we, I, Ty. I, what I love about Ty, Josh, when you said that, Ty was like, What was that again? <laughs> <laughs> right, pop up praise, and that's that's one thing we actually brought up in one of our staff meetings this morning. Of hey, let's bring that back, even though we're here, it would be really easy mm. for us to just run and go back to let's just spend our time on, on a Sunday mornings. But what yeah. about the kids who aren't back? Yeah, right. yeah. Why, why can't we go do pop up praise again? And Josh, even creating like a committee or something where that's their focus. You know, yep. how how about all these, you know, uh, amazing children ministry workers who feel like they're being they're not engaged in the season? Guess what? I got an amazing job for you. I'm gonna give you a list of kids and families. We're right. gonna do some pop up praise. You are the pop up praise. <laughs> committee i love it i love it i love it so 
you know, as our time is winding down, and Kizzy, I see that you want uh, some of the links that I mentioned earlier. I'll go ahead and write that in as as Ty and Josh is kind of sharing, you know, some final things for us. But you know, um, listen, we, we've come on here. Some of us are online. Some of us are in person. Some of us are all over the place. <laughs> Well, hey, we think we're in person, then we find out the next week that we are online, okay? That's happened to a lot of us. How can we stay refreshed and excited? We need to stay excited about children's ministry as, as things start to reopen, you know, as we try to lean into this new normal. Do you guys have any recommendations? on how to make sure that that zeal is still strong. But so many of us have, I mean, a lot of us have kind of been on a sabbatical. Some of those who are watching, like how can we keep that zeal? Ty, you start, then Josh, you follow. Tell us how can we kind of keep that zeal going? Well, one of the things I, you know, I think of course, staying close to our heavenly father is the mm. only way to stay refreshed with our calling in the next yeah. generation. And then allowing him to remind you of your calling on your life and the wise, right? God has chosen chosen each one of us to serve his children. And they need us more during this time. Like so many children are going through a lot of um, mental issues. Or not, I wouldn't mm -hmm. use mental issues, but they're struggling mentally, you know, with um, how they view themselves, how they view other people, depression. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are going on. So we are still needed. I feel like Zill is all about a perspective and mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our ministry and our work is not on sabbatical. The way we are accustomed to serving is on a sabbatical. But we also must stay connected to our children and our families. And we've been mm -hmm. talking to kind of do that. And so I think as we stay connected with our babies, they will they'll help fuel us. But the number one is our Heavenly Father. He's going to, when you're exhausted and want to throw in the towel, it's going to be him that's going to remind you like, hey, this, listen, you, I chose yeah. you. Get to do this, like mm. I. Try. You get to do this. I love that time. You get to do this. <laughs> so being reminded of that, mm -hmm. um, I think it's only our heavenly Father is going to actually, you know, put the life back in us when we're mm -hmm. feeling down. But um, and and just a lot of God to remind you, like I I, I called you, I chose you specifically mm -hmm. for the specifically for this place, and um, I just think that's vitally important. Staying close to our heavenly Father, yeah. He'll you of what He's called you to do. Absolutely. Josh, give us some encouragement. I think Ty has my notes here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, the big thing there is keep your eye on the why. Mm. So lots of times I've found it helps me if I kind of zoom out and start to think on a grand scale. Okay, wait, wait. The God of the whole universe, maker of heaven and earth, the one who thought of giraffes, like that guy. He picked me for this job, and that's incredible. And not just that, mm -hmm. he picked me to um, to um, to uh, to introduce kids to him. Mm. That's a huge deal. So yeah. it's really, really easy to just come in and do your job well and leave. But mm. no, we get to do this, and it and uh, and this is a huge deal when we when we drive in or log in. This is a huge deal. We get to show yeah. Jesus, yeah. And, um, and we and we get to be used to form their faith. Mm. So keep your eye on that why. It's a huge deal. Mm, and what, I love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking, Josh. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we also even share with our families is just thank you for allowing us to be a part of their story, like their journey, their life, just being that little, even if it's five minutes of their life story, and we get to show them the love of Christ on who Christ is just by how we love on them. I just, you know, yeah. So thank you, Josh, for just, yeah, that why is just so important. So I love it. I love it. You guys, that, I mean, that is something that, you know, when Guy and I, you know, when we're serving, you know, and we, we are in, you know, for a long, we know that we are in for, I mean, we, we have two services at our church now. Uh, we started as one, turned into two, um, and so really you are in the church, you know, for a, a work shift. <laughs> it is like, I mean, you were there for hours on end. And every time we go and we're leading that Sunday, the number one thing we pray for, we thank God. We just praise God 
in the car as we're driving. We just thank God. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to do this. You chose us to do this. I think children's ministry is one of the most fertile, most amazing ministries on the planet. And so I'm just super excited. I'm so humbled that you all came to join us this evening. I know you all got so much out of this this evening. We are here every third Tuesday for you. Do not forget that next month we are not going to be here because we are heading off to the Children's Ministry Moving Forward Conference, and we're super excited about that. So make sure that you come to that. But Ty, Josh, and our our, our, our kids pastor friend, Noel and Spirit, thank you for joining us <laughs> uh, this evening. It has just been so refreshing to my soul, and I know to so many who have been watching this evening. I want you to know whether you are online or whether you are in person, do everything that you do with the spirit of excellence. You need to read a book, if you need to Google it, you need to talk to a junior leader <laughs> about how to excel in a certain area, do it, because it's so worth it. Thank you so much for spending time with us this evening, and we will see you next month at the conference. You guys have a great night. I guess we can get out. Do we? I guess so. I think it's just us now. All right. <laughs> uh, have a good night. <laughs>